So now we're going to perform hazardous drug compounding. Before I begin, I want to just review some of the differences required. The first thing is in the primary engine control unit itself. So you'll notice, if you remember, this is a vertical flow hood rather than a horizontal flow hood. Because of that, I'll be using a modified aseptic technique. Also, some of the other differences include the fact that we need to have some type of mat that could absorb any potential hazardous drug leak. So that's the purpose of the mat here as well. In addition, you'll notice that the bag is placed with the port facing me rather than the opposite way. And again, that's because we're working with a vertical flow rather than a horizontal flow. So the first thing that I want to do before I compound is again, uh, crack open my vials. So this is going to require reconstitution of a hazardous drug followed by placing that into the bag. So just as you would with non-hazardous compounding, we do want to make sure that we use sterile alcohol wipes to clean all points of entry that we're going to be working with using a different area of the sterile wipe on each product. Once this has been completed, we can assemble our syringe and needle. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the cap from my needle. Now today we're gonna to be compounding well, for what we're going to call doxorubicin, which is a chemotherapy drug. So we're going to reconstitute this vial with 10 ml of sterile water for injection. So I'm going to pull back my syringe to 10 ml and replace that volume of air into the sterile water. As I enter, I'm going to make sure I go in as, at an angle. Go back a little bit past the 10 ml mark. Remove my bubbles by flicking on the syringe and let them go to the top. Then finish to the 10 ml mark. Now you notice I went a little past, that's okay. You can simply make sure your syringe needle again is in the sterile water and then re-pull back to 10 ml. Remove that from the vial. And at this point, we're going to enter the chemotherapy drug, doxorubicin. Again, I'm gonna enter by going in at an angle. And then I'm gonna slowly push my water in. Now this is a small volume, so you won't need to necessarily let air come back into your syringe to complete the, the reconstitution process. But sometimes with the higher volume, you may have to take a second to allow some air to come back into your syringe to equal pressure and then finish putting the rest of your dilly went into the vial. So now I've finished transferring the water to the vial. But prior to exiting the vial, I want to make repressurize so that there's equal pressure in the vial and in the syringe. And I do that by pulling back to the 10 ml mark. Now it's important that you are not, you do not have the syringe in the solution so you don't withdraw any solution. So now I have my pressures equalized and I can exit the vial. Set my needle down, gently swirl the vial. Now I'm gonna do this until the solution is uniform in color and appearance and there's no visual chunks of powder in the vial. So now we're ready to withdraw our required dose from the vial and push it into our bag. 
So we're gonna be withdrawing a dose of six mLs today. One key consideration when you're performing hazardous drug compounding is you would never want to draw a dose that's more than three quarters of your syringe size. So for purposes of this, with a 20 mL syringe, if you had to draw a volume greater than 15 mLs, you would want to use the next size up syringe. And that's due to the fact that if we send a syringe with hazardous drug to the floor, to the unit, that's filled higher than three quarters of the way, there's a higher potential for that to leak or to spill and causing hazardous drug exposure to nursing patients and family. So now we're gonna be withdrawing a six ml dose. I pull my syringe back to the six ml mark, remove the cap, enter the vial at an angle again. I wanna push my air into the vial prior to flipping. Once the air is in, I firmly hold on the plunger, flip the vial upside down, and then allow the pressure that I've entered into the vial to begin refilling the vial with drug. Now I'll have to use a little pressure on the plunger in order to get back to the six mLs. And again, I'm gonna go a little bit beyond because I know I have some air in there that I need to remove. At this point, I have air bubbles that I'm going to again flick to the top of the syringe. And then I'll begin to push that air off and get back to my 6 ml final volume. So now that I have my final volume in the syringe, I can place the vial back onto the surface and slowly remove my needle from the vial. Keeping the syringe in my right hand, I'm going to grab the port of our sailing bag and pull it up, keeping it firm. Now I'm going to enter the port and inject my drug into the bag. Remove, and again, using the scoop method, recap. Place my syringe in the hazardous waste bin, if we had one here. Put my port cover over the IV bag. So at this point, before we label the bag, we're going to decontaminate the bag. So as I perform hazardous drug compounding, we have to consider that the bag itself is now contaminated with hazardous drug. Before sending that to the floor, it needs to be contaminated. Products that decontaminate include sterile water, sodium hypochlorite, hydrogen peroxide, as well as sterile alcohol. So we're gonna be using our preempt wipe, which contains hydrogen peroxide in it. So to do the decontamination, we simply, with one stroke, wipe the entire bag, as well as the tubing, because that has been contaminated with drug as well. Once this has been performed, we can place our label on the bag. Another important consideration for hazardous drug compounding is we need to place an auxiliary label identifying that as a hazardous medication. We'll be using a chemotherapy drug label, auxiliary label for this bag. Prior to removing the ba completed bag from the hood, we need to remove our outer pair of contaminated chemo gloves. Then we can use the inner pair, which are still clean, to remove the product since it's been decontaminated and put it in the bag. So to remove the outer pair, I'm going to pull the outer cuff 
as I do it with my left hand here, I'm gonna turn this into a ball, keep it in the left hand, and then pull back on the inside with my clean hand to remove the other glove, turning it inside out. This would be placed in our biohazard bag or bin inside the hood as well. So now my outer pair of contaminated gloves have been removed, leaving my clean pair of gloves and my decontaminated final product. I will pick it up, remove it from the hood, and place it in our chemo bag, which will keep it secure, seal it, and then send it to the floor.